greetings to one and all yeah especially to young people wherever in the state of kerala in this great land of india and the many nations beyond in this video i would venture to reflect with you on the nature of the age in which we are living and therefore the kind of understanding that's very crucial for us to decide what kind of attitude to life and strategy for dealing with life situations we need to evolve and perfect it's my fundamental conviction that every age has its spirit and uh, there are only two ways of reckoning this reality either we allow the spirit of the age to dominate us completely and become assimilated with the spirit of the times or the spirit of the age or we negotiate the spirit of the age and rise above its aberrations and limitations and uh, it's in the latter approach that one attains authentic personality and uh, i'm convinced that young people in particular are keen to understand the dynamics of personality building in a healthy wholesome and holistic fashion unlike the shallow ideas of personality formation entertained by the secular approach to it now the foremost point of attraction for people in our times is par the modern man is a par worshiping man a par worshiping creature it's not that par was um, scorned by people in the past and it's only in the 20th century and thereafter that people discovered that there was something like par and they fell in love with it not at all par has always fascinated people par par has always tempted people but i believe that never before in the history of our species was par so intensely intimate with the life of even ordinary people today everything is uh decided va- evaluated respected or despised on the scale of power if you have power uh awesome power then you are actually treated as god uh for example uh, our very popular prime minister shri narendra modi uh has uh, has attained a status of near divinity namo 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 uh namo namo is the way we address god uh offering obeisance to god so fortunately his name the abbreviation of his name lends itself to this process of deification um so young people feel attracted seduced by this phenomenon of par um i used to interview candidates for admitting them uh, to st stephen's college undergraduate courses and one of the questions that i used to ask with those candidates uh was um who is your role model and uh, at least 5 out of 10 Uh, candidates are interviewed over 9 years said it was adolf hitler and i would further quiz them on why it was that they adored adolf hitler they would say he was a man of great power so even a young person graduating from school is already a devotee uh, of power so uh, the prime minister and his associates understand this psychology very clearly and they're playing up to it beautifully and effectively and reaching a rich reaping a rich harvest of it and um, i i give it to them for their sense of shrewdness and their ability to tap into this uh, 
available resource. But uh, the fact that power is uh, so popular with people and it attracts everyone and people are willing to worship power does not mean that it is an unqualified blessing. And that's where we need clarity of understanding. If you look into the essence of power, you'll see that it's nothing but man dominating man. Uh, a human being realizes his power by imposing his will on others and all of them being obliged to accept it without any protest or effective protest. So the essence of power is the ability to impose your will on your fellow human beings. And just as individuals have power, nations have their uh, sense of power. Now if you look at the context of the Russia-Ukraine war, Russia wants to exercise its power by dictating terms to Ukraine or imposing its will on Ukraine. If Putin decides that certain regions of Ukraine should become part of Russia overnight, there it is. Uh, there's nobody to resist his will. That's called power, raw power, right? And if you don't fall in line, you face the consequence. Therefore, cities are laid waste, homes are destroyed, lives are ruined, and the whole ecology of, the, of that region is ruined, I believe, for at least a few centuries to come. So that's what power craziness can mean. Now, the flip side of power is that because the individual who wants to realize his power and the thrill of his power in its most acute form, um, he, with perhaps even not knowing it, comes under a psychological compulsion to degrade others. Now, this is extremely important. If you want to understand the psychology of power, what I'm now saying is extremely important. So, individuals who are power-oriented will also have a very negative psychology a nervous psychology, a psychology of insecurity in the presence of others, especially if they're individuals of promise. And therefore, the power addicts will also be very, very keenly motivated to keep everyone else under control. So power addicts will be also control freaks. And the consequence in organizing a, the life of a whole nation or a whole society in terms of this power addiction is that it has a direct bearing on the range of one's freedom. Now, if a power addicted or a control addict, uh, addicted person is in charge of your destiny, then it's very likely that your freedom is seriously compromised. Because if that person allows free play to everybody else's talent, everybody else's potentialities, then he faces challenge. Therefore, the only strategy that a power addict uh, knows and practices is the strategy of keeping everybody down, uh, press the lid down. Now, this has serious consequences for the development of a society and a nation. Because after all, the development of a nation is nothing but the sum total of the development of its individual members. And if individual members are kept uh, uh, down uh, and, and uh, kept under leash and not allowed to attain the full blossoming of their potential, then cumulatively the nation begins to wilt and wither. So despite the dramatic uh, euphoric sense that the cult of power generates. End of the day, the consequences for the country and the society will be highly injurious. But this begins to show its um, uh, unhealthy aspect only in course of time. But when this process starts, there is a heady excitement and people be will begin to think that, you know, great things are in the offing for them. But one after the other, day after day, they'll realize that all their dreams wither away 
uh, but by the time full realization dawns on them, it will be too late. Now, this is the problem. And I'm, what all I'm saying is the wisdom I have distilled out of my very limited awareness uh, of whatever has happened in history. So it is my historical sense that enables me to draw this conclusion. Now, young people uh, growing up in this kind of an ambience, this kind of a, a spirit of the age, uh, which is not confined to India, which is not confined to one or two countries. I'm talking about the global trend. Everywhere you find uh, people who are power crazy, uh, people who go to any extent uh, to retain their power. Donald Trump being a very good example of it. Uh, and American democracy is going through severe problems on account of that power addiction. So for a power addict like Trump, it's hard to believe, in fact, it's impossible to believe that someone else could defeat him in a fair election. And therefore, if he doesn't win the election, then there is election fraud and uh, uh, the consequences are there for all to see. So look at uh, the turmoil all over the world. It's nothing but the cult of power, the malevolent aspect of the cult of power in full and lurid display. But unfortunately, people are not really engaging with these spectacles of human misery and arriving at a clear understanding of why these things are happening. Now, in such a climate of opinion, when young people grow up, they need to be very, very careful of the very malignant, harmful effect of this particular um, uh, orientation because a human being is very powerfully influenced by the context in which he or she is growing up and it's almost inevitable that you soak up the spirit of the age and in the process you get sucked up and your potential as a human being your true essence as a human being gets corrupted and it's a tragedy that's eminently avoidable. And that's the reason why I'm sharing these uh, thoughts with you, merely to constitute a, uh, hopefully a timely warning so that young people can read the spirit of the times and then formulate a strategy for negotiating that spirit uh, in order to minimize its harmful influence on them. So from what I've said so far, it should be obvious that succumbing to the spirit of the present age, which is an age addicted to the cult of power is harmful to personality orientation. In fact, addiction to power twists, uh, garbles one's personality. One doesn't become a genuine human being. One becomes shallow, one becomes cunning, one becomes cruel, one becomes hard-hearted because of this power orientation or this uh, uh, controlled addiction. Um, now, therefore, what is one to do? One has to look at alternatives. Now, what is the alternative to power? Now, there is this other concept of authority. Authority. Now, the difference between power and authority is that there is a far greater degree of responsibility in the uh, uh, scheme of things to which authority pertains, whereas power is totally free from that sense of responsibility. A power addict may show some signs of responsibility, but that is incidental. It is not essential to power orientation. In fact, what is essential to power orientation is that it breeds callousness and hard-heartedness, and therefore it also suppresses the individual's capacity to be caring and appreciative of others. Now, as far as authority is concerned, authority is healthy. In fact, when people live together, or when there are collectivities involved, or when there are uh, more, more than uh, uh, one, one person, then some form of authority is required. For example, uh, the parents in the house have authority, a school teacher in the classroom has authority. Well, even the postman who brings your mail has authority, the policeman has his authority, so on and so forth. So all forms of authority. But these forms of authority, all of them have one thing in common, and that is they are meant to be of beneficial application to the given uh, group of people, that, the given collectivity. Uh, that sense of concern can be absent from power orientation, and nobody would be surprised if it is. Uh, secondly, 
authority is part of a reciprocal relationship. For example, uh, elections are conducted once in five years in India, then a democratic government is formed. The government thus formed has authority. What the government has is not power but authority. That authority is derived from the will of the people. In fact, nowhere is it said that the governments derive their power from the will of the people. The correct expression is that governments derive their authority from the will of the people. Right? So, authority becomes genuine only so long as those who exercise this authority respect this arrangement. That is, they, have, they retain respect for the will of the people. And the will of the people is respected in, in practical terms by prioritizing the welfare of the people. And to therefore offer an approach to governance or good governance, uh, which is sensitive to the needs and expectations, the aspirations of the people. Whereas in an autocratic uh, uh, practice of governance, uh, which is uh, the context of uh, power uh, orientation, uh, this consideration is peripheral or incidental. So um, now, for example, um, if you have specialized in a particular domain of knowledge, then you have authority over that subject. You don't have power over that subject, you have authority over that subject. All right. Uh, now, that is a good thing to cultivate. But the discipline of exercising authority must always be remembered. And that is to say, authority can never be and should never be exercised for one's own benefit. It must be exercised always for the common good. When the common good is forgotten and authority is exercised, it ceases to be authority, it becomes power. And one aspect, one, one symptom of that decline or degeneration is that in that context, the exercise of authority also uh, begins to be violent. Uh, a government which shifts its foundation from authority to power comes under the increasing need to resort to violence, state violence. And this is a symptom that young people in particular must watch very carefully all over the world. And wherever the shift in foundation takes place, from authority to power, violence begins to convulse the life of the people. And this is so obvious, therefore I'm not going to linger more on this subject or give further exp uh, explanations or illustrations. Now there is a third possible approach, and this is what I would commend to young people, and that is charisma. I introduced three words in our thinking today. One was power. And I said that the spirit of this age is in love with power. Then I introduced the concept of authority. And I said that authority is constituted as a collaborative product between leaders and the people. And authority becomes genuine and healthy when those who wield authority do so to maximize the welfare of the people. Now there's another, the third, and on that I'll close, that's called charisma personal charisma. Now, personal charisma uh, is largely on account of the stature, the character strength, the soul force, as Gandhi used to say, of the individual. Uh, the great sociologist Max Weber also talks about institutional charisma, but I don't want to go into that. I'm going to confine myself here uh, 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 entirely to personal charisma that particular quality, that sense of power, benign power, beautiful, attractive, magnetic, empowering, ennobling, elevating power that a person has, which is always exercised. Charismatic powers are always exercised in a self-transcending way. Spiritual power is charismatic. Political power can be either uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, spiritual charisma, not power. Uh, spiritual charisma uh, uh, is, is always built on the strength of self-transcendence. In the domain of politics, it's either power or authority. When authority degenerates, it becomes power. And power necessitates the use of force. 
therefore you have a tendency to uh, repress or suppress or uh, uh, muscle opposition and suppress dissent but when we move into the domain of spirituality we don't have power or even authority though authority is spoken about spiritual authority but what is even more quintessentially typical of the spiritual domain is charisma personal spiritual charisma and that's there's no definition for that charisma it's something to uh, to be experienced to believe such a beautiful thing you, if you are in the presence of a charismatic person then you feel uh, a kind of inner refining experience i had one such experience i have to recall it here today in 1994 when i was fortunate to meet with mother teresa uh, one to one uh, and have a fairly long discussion for 45 minutes which was very rare uh, the mother did not have that much time to give to people and for, for whatever reason she was very tolerant of my demands and she spent spent time with me and i tell you every moment i spent in the presence of the mother i felt that i was being purified from within i began to experience a deep longing to rise above my crude personal instincts and to attain that higher and nobler levels of my being or using the uh, terms introduced by uh, terms current in hindu philosophy uh, the 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 great, great desire the great thirst to rise above the alpatman the lower self and attain the level of the mahatman the noble self the noble self that's a part of spiritual charisma and it's a beautiful experience to be with such such a person now therefore let me now conclude when young people respect your which religion you practice which region you belong to whether you are male female makes no difference in this context when you think of building your personality for god's sake build it on the paradigm of charisma not of power not even of authority but of charisma because charisma also includes a certain degree of authority but it's the authority of which you become completely unaware in the political context the man who exercises authority is conscious of his authority in the spiritual context a person has authority without knowing it and he is not even aware of his charismatic powers these are blessings these are encouragement these are elevating experiences that others experience the individual with that spiritual charisma is completely unaware of it because he has perfected the strength of self transcendence now that is a very beautiful state and if a young person can attain that state uh you know the classic example of that is uh prince gautama who later on became the sakya muni uh if i if i were to uh, make a list of the five people who fascinate me most the sakya muni gautama the buddha will be in the on that list you know the power the charismatic power of his personality unbelievable the saying saying with jesus christ you know people experience that Jesus was completely unaware of it but those around him felt it in a very powerful manner the cleansing power of the charismatic personality of Jesus there is nothing more beautiful than that right so living as we do in this age of malevolent malignant exercise craving for an exercise of raw power it is likely that we get infected by this epidemic of the cult of power in which case our personality gets corrupted ruined and we become uh, distorted versions of ourselves we must rise above its seductions and rise even above the level of authority and at end of it to attain the incredible incomparable dignity and enlightenment illumination of spiritual charisma it's denoting such a personality that jesus says you are the light of the world a higher acknowledgement a higher uh, praise cannot be thought of 
That's my prayer for young people, no matter who you are. May all of you become charismatic individuals. And in that case, you will be a blessing to others and you will also be a blessing to yourself. You will know what a beautiful thing life is. The opposite of that is this terrible, um, shall we say, mistake of degrading one's life into an ugly thing. It becomes a burden. And because it's happening on a big scale, the age in which we are living is also characterized by the epidemic of boredom, depression, resulting in large scale epidemic level suicides all over the world. It's a terrible tragedy. The ultimate, the incomparable gift of life should not be degraded into a burden. And it usually happens because these subtle things are ignored. And people unthinkingly without any spiritual discernment imitate the spirit of the times. In the process, they get inwardly corrupted and cheapened. And the moment you're cheapened, your life becomes a burden. And all that you can do thereafter is either to make a nuisance of yourself to as many people as possible, or to end the misery, the burden of your life at the earliest. And therefore, as the existential philosophers of the 20th century uh, kept on saying, suicide becomes the only viable option. But that's no option. Life is the option. The only thing to do is to celebrate life. And that's called charisma. So think of the word charisma. That's the light of human personality.